All right, let's take a look at some of these physics application problems. And for question number one, I have this particle that's moving along a horizontal line. And the uh, position function is given by S of t. So that's this polynomial over here. And the units are S in meters and t in seconds. Okay, so for the very first question, I wanna find the displacement of the particle from time t equals to one to time t equals to two. Okay, so uh, displacement's not too hard to find in this particular course. Uh, this is my symbol for displacement, and displacement is simply going to be your final position minus your initial position. All right, so just like in physics. And uh, B represents your final time, and A represents your starting time. So if I go back to my problem, uh, the time of two seconds, this is my final time, and time of one second represents my initial time. So now this will be S of 2 minus S of 1. And what I've done here in this uh, video homework guide is I have a little graph of the position function over here. It's just a uh, polynomial of degree three. And I can just get my values right from this graph here. So um, here's my first one here. So uh, at this particular point, uh, if time is two seconds, uh, the position is at negative one. So this will be at negative one and then minus. And then when we're at time of one second, which is right here, the position is gonna be one. So it would be, uh, just a positive one there, and negative one minus one is gonna be negative two meters, okay? So uh, basically, uh, the displacement from uh, this part, uh, those time values right there, if I just highlight that from the graph, what we're trying to say right now is this change in position right here represents a two meters, a change of two meters there. Here, I'll put a, a minus sign there. Okay, great, uh, let's move on to uh, the second question now in this homework video guide. And for the second question, I'm asked to find the average velocity of the particle from t equals to one to t equals to two. All right, so not bad. I mean, um, if I wanna find average velocity, uh, we just kind of plug that into a formula here. So average velocity, and that's just um, the slope of the secant line actually. So this is really S sub b minus S sub a divided by b minus a, right? So this is basically the, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So uh, it's basically the average velocity is just like an average slope. So it's the average slope of a secant line. Okay, and if I plug in my numbers in, it will be s of two minus s of one all over two minus one. And uh, from our answer from part one, we knew the answer was negative two because basically this part right here is displacement and that was the answer from question number one. And then uh, two minus one is simply gonna be one. So negative two divided by one is gonna be negative two. And since we're talking about velocity here, my units will be meters per second. All right, so velocity is always measured in meters per second. All right, so that's not too bad. The first two questions always require you to plug the numbers into some formula. All right, and then uh, for part three, I need to find the velocity and the acceleration function. So this isn't too bad. This is just your second and third derivatives. So if I wanna find uh, the derivative of S to T, that's the same thing as your velocity function. And we just find the derivative of that. So the derivative of that using the power rule would be three T squared minus 12 T plus nine. So there is my uh, velocity function. And if I wanna find my acceleration function, that's just the second derivative of your position function. So this would be A of T. And um, well, actually, um, let me write a little bit more here. Sometimes you can also write V prime of T, which equals to A of T. And then you just take the derivative of this particular uh, polynomial now. So uh, using the power rule again, this will be six T minus 12. All right, so those are my uh, velocity and acceleration functions, uh, not too bad. Let's move on to question part four now. So uh, at what times is the particle at rest? Okay, so when you're at rest, that means you're not moving. And uh, when you're not moving when your velocity is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, basically from my previous uh, question from part three, I know V of T uh, I'm looking at my velocity, right? So I know that's gonna be three T squared uh, minus 12 T uh, plus nine. So I'm looking at my velocity function here because I wanna find out when is this function equal to zero, okay? Over here, I do have a graph here. So I'm just kind of uh, graphing this um, in green here. 
So when I look at the, the points where we have the uh, velocity equal to zero, that's pretty much your x-intercepts. So I have one at one and at three, right? So this happens when t equals to one and three seconds. Now, if you didn't have the graph like I do in my particular uh, uh, solution key here, uh, all you can do, what you can do next is you can take your velocity function and just set it equal to zero. All right, and then uh, if you want, you can factor out the three and you get t squared minus uh, 4t plus three. Divide both sides by three and you just get this now. And then you can just uh, solve this uh, quadratic here. So I need two numbers that multiply to three and those two numbers need to combine to negative one. So that's gonna be a negative one and negative three. And uh, if I solve this quadratic, I get t equals to one and t equals to three. So uh, as you can see, the answer here algebraically should match the answers that you have from your graph. All right, so the particle is not moving when v of t equals to zero and that's simply the uh, x-intercepts of your velocity time graph. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number five now. So find the position, velocity, and speed, and acceleration of the particle at time t equals to four. All right, so this is just basically just brute force here. So um, um, if I have s of t here, um, actually, never mind. Let me just kind of save a little bit of time here and just uh, write in the numbers here. So s of four would equal to four cubed minus six times four squared plus nine times four minus three. All right, so we just kind of calculate that out, and um, I guess the position will be at one meter when we're at time of four seconds. Now, for v of t, uh, I need to find the velocity at four seconds. So I'm plugging four into my velocity into my velocity uh, function there. And uh, just a recall here, so your velocity function, um, if you don't have it, uh, it, it was three t squared minus twelve t uh, plus nine. So this is basically from uh, question number three here, and I'll write down my acceleration function as well. Uh, my, my acceleration function was 6t minus 12. All right, so let's go ahead and find out v of four now. So this would be three times four squared minus 12 times four plus nine. And if we do the math there, we should get nine meters per second. If I wanna find my acceleration now, sorry, not a of t, but a of four, we're plugging four into my acceleration function. So that's gonna be six times four minus 12. All right, so we're taking our answer from part uh, three and we're just plugging four into the polynomial. And if we do that, we get 12 and the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. Okay, and we also need to find the speed here, which I forgot. So speed is really the absolute value of your velocity. So my velocity was nine, so the absolute value of nine is still gonna be nine uh, meters per second. Okay, so that's it, for, that's it for question number five. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number six here. Um, is the particle moving away from the origin or toward the origin at time t equals to four? Justify your answer. Okay, well, um, basically if you're moving away uh, in class, we just mentioned that when you're moving away, that, that, that just means your velocity function is uh, greater than zero, or what that really means is above the axes. Okay, so you are moving away from the origin whenever your velocity function is above the x-axis, or in this case, above the t-axis. Now, here's my velocity function that is graphed here. And um, basically, if I look at four seconds right here, clearly, if I go straight up, the coordinates of four are actually four comma nine. And, uh, but basically, um, if I actually evaluate v of four, v of four equals to nine, and nine is clearly greater than zero, right? It's above the, uh, it's above the axes, right? So clearly, this part of the graph, all of that is definitely above the, uh, this is the t-axis here t axes or x axes. So uh, that justifies that you are moving away. At time t equals to four. And that's it for question number six. Uh, it's just a weird language to, to kind of see if you understand the theory behind a velocity time graph. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number seven now. All right, so I need to find the average acceleration of the particle from t equals to zero to t equals to two. Okay, so when we're talking about average acceleration, um, that's pretty much the uh, slope of the secant line. And uh, basically when you're dealing with acceleration, you're looking at the slope. 
slope of your VT graph. Okay, and we want to find the slope between t equals to zero and t equals to two. So um, this is a uh, zero right there, and there is two. So you're almost drawing this uh, secant line from there to there. And we want to find that slope, and that slope right here represents the average acceleration. All right, so it's the slope of a secant line, something that we saw back in the limits chapter. And the best way to do this now is write down average acceleration, and that equals to um, v of two minus uh, v of zero. Right, this is your uh, this is your final time. That's your initial time, all divided by uh, two minus zero, right? So it's pretty much the same thing as um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so what's a v of two? Well, v of two, if I look at my graph right here, when the velocity is two, the position is negative three, or the, the height that the height that I have there is negative three. So this will be uh, negative three minus, then over here, uh, v of zero, sorry, v of zero is gonna be nine, so, uh, that's gonna be zero comma nine, so that'll be negative three minus nine, all divided by two minus zero. Okay, so uh, I have negative 12 over there divided by two, and if I do that, I get if I complete that calculation, I get negative six meters per second squared. All right, so that is the uh, slope of that line, and uh, you just need to know um, that when t is zero, um, that, that, that you have a height of nine here, so nine, and when uh, when your time is two, the height is gonna be negative three, and you can plug those numbers into your slope formula there. Okay, so move on now. Okay, so during which time intervals is the particle moving in the positive direction? Okay, so what does positive direction mean again? So uh, positive direction means literally going away. And uh, when you're going away, we, we already mentioned in a previous problem that this means you are above the, the axes, right? So above the t-axis or the x-axis. So if, if this is my velocity time graph, this right here, that's the, um, the t-axis here, because that represents time. So um, during which time intervals is the particle moving in the positive direction? Okay, so when I look at this graph, if I look at the, the blue regions right here, this is where the graph is above the t-axis, right? All right, so if I take a look at uh, this whole section right here, this whole section is definitely above the t-axis or above the x-axis, right? So um, I know that this value right here is gonna be three. So um, uh, what we can say here when t is greater than three, right? When t is greater than three, we're definitely above the, uh, the x-axis or the t-axis. And this value, this x-intercept is one. And when we're to the left of one, then um, when we're less than one, we're definitely above the x-axis, but we also stop at zero, right? So uh, that's what we have right there. So these are the time intervals where the graph is uh, above the, uh, the t-axis. Uh, sometimes if you want, you can also draw the VT graph. And if you don't have a graph, what you can do is you can put the, the times where V of t is equal to zero. This is when you're at rest. So this is at one and three. And if you start plugging numbers into the regions, you'll notice that um, this part here will be uh, positive. This part here will be negative, And this part here will be positive, right? And I can also stop this at zero. And then from this graph, you can also just kind of label that as this represents t is greater than zero. And this part right here represents when t is between zero and one. All right, so some people like the horizontal number line method better, or you can just take a look at the graph there, and I can clearly see that uh, these are the regions where the graph is above the t-axis. Okay, so a lot of times with these physics questions, you just need to understand what to look for, and you need to kind of break down the language into language that you understand, and then find the, the missing parts to the graph to answer the question. All right, so move on to question number nine. During which time intervals is the velocity of the particle decreasing? Okay, so what does this really mean? The velocity of the particle decreasing, right? So what this really means is that your velocity function has a negative slope. That's it. So the velocity of the particle is decreasing, that generally means um, the velocity has a negative slope, right? So when I'm looking at this graph here, um, here's my VT graph here. Um, 
if I look at those two points right there, uh, I would I think most students would agree that this part right here, the slope is negative, right? The slope is negative right there. So um, um, what we can do based on that graph, we can say that the slope is negative when we're between zero and two, right? So that's when the slope is negative. Now, I don't have the acceleration time graph here, but if I did have to construct a uh, acceleration graph here, I mean, if I go straight down, this would be my um, x, the, the, the intercept on my acceleration time graph here. And if I have a negative slope, that means I'm below the, the axis there. And if I have a positive slope, that means I am above the graph over here for my acceleration time graph, right? So another way of looking at when is the velocity of the particle decreasing, this also can also mean when acceleration is below the axes, all right? So if I take a look at this graph now, this is two, this is a of t, and clearly we are below the x-axis there, and we're above the x-axis there, all right? So from here, you can also argue that t has to be uh, less than two, but it should also be greater or equal to zero, right? So that region right there. So multiple ways to kind of get that particular question there, but once again, I would just go back to the graph here and find out when does the velocity time graph have a negative slope, and that's between zero and two. So different ways to kind of look at that particular problem. All right, let's look at, look at question number 10 here. During which time intervals is the speed of the particle um, increasing? Justify your answer. Okay, so if the speed of the particle is increasing, that happens when V of T and A of T have the same sign. That's the justification. All right, so when V of T and A of T have the same sign, that means the particle is increasing. Okay, um, here's my graph right here, v of t equals to 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. It's a parabola here, right? Um, so what I kind of noticed with this particular graph is if I look at this region right here, uh, clearly the velocity here is above the x-axis, right? So I can see in, that, in this blue region right there, v of t is definitely greater than zero right there, right? That's, that part is above the x-axis. But that, but that blue region also has a positive slope. So this is what I mean by they have a the same sign, right? So I know that this value right here is three. So what we're saying is everything past three, the speed of the particle should be increasing. Fantastic. Another region where you need to look at is this region right here in blue. Okay, so in that region, the velocity is below the x-axis, right? So th this is below the x-axis. So that means a V of T is less than zero because it's below the x-axis, right? But what do you notice about the slope in that region? Well, the slope is all going to be, uh, sorry, the slope is all negative here, right? Negative, 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 right? So in this region right here, the slope is also negative. So we know that A of T is less than zero, right? So this is what we mean by same signs, less than zero, less than zeros. So by looking at that time frame, I can say that um, V of T and A of T have the same sign when T is greater than three. All right, that, re that represents this answer over here. This happens when t is greater than three. And what about that blue region there? Okay, well, um, I believe uh, if I actually just erase all this now, uh, this point right here is one, and this point right here is two, right? So when we're between one and two, when the x value is between one and two, um, the velocity function is below the x-axis and has a negative slope, right? So um, what we can do here is we can say um, um, one. All right, so this is the other region where um, velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Okay, um, let me kind of explain this in another way here. Uh, we'll, so, we'll still get the same answer here, but let me kind of draw out the horizontal number line, which is what we're a little bit more familiar with seeing from class. So let me kind of draw out a uh, velocity time graph here. And uh, based on my graph here, there's a one and a three. Those are the intercepts. So let's put a, let's put a zero here, uh, a one and a three. All right, so uh, what I'm just trying to justify here is when we're above, when we're past three, we're above the, the axis, right? We're above the x-axis, right? Uh, when we're in this region here from one to three, we're below the x-axis, right? So a negative sign. And then uh, over here, um, 
from 0 to 1, we were above the x-axis, so I'm going to put a bunch of pluses here. All right, so that's your velocity time graph. If I draw another graph here, your acceleration graph, which represents the slope, right, of the velocity time graph, let's just look at this one more time here. This time, let me uh, highlight this as, this is 2, right? So look at this, look at the x values from 0 to 2. From 0 to 2, from 0 to 2, the slope is actually negative, right? And then everything past 2, the slope is positive. All right, so this is the kind of diagram that we kind of drew, drew out in class. And what we can see right here is between 1 and 2, we have the same signs, right? They're both negative, right? So this is how we get from 1 less than t less than 2. And then over here, we have the same sign over there, right? So that means that t is greater than 3. All right, so those are, those are, that's another way to kind of look at this particular problem and find out when or which time intervals the speed of the particle is increasing. And that happens when b of t and a of t have the same sign. Okay, last question, this total distance question here. So find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first four seconds. Okay, so for this particular, for this particular problem, you definitely need, um, you definitely need the uh, graph right there. Uh, so that's S of t, and this is my S of t graph. And we can kind of look at this logically here, right? So um, if I kind of draw a number line here, this is S of t, okay? So uh, when we're at zero, uh, we're, we're kind of at like this, um, let's just say uh, this is negative three, and this happens when time equals to zero, okay? And then over here, when time equals to one, I go to a height of one, right? So it's like, um, I go from negative three to, let's just say I'll put a one over here. So uh, I think this is a bad graph here. So uh, I'll put a dot here and a dot there. So it's kind of like the graph is going like this. And this is at, um, at t equals to one. Okay, so from t equals to zero to t equals to one, if I look at this entire distance right here, um, basically the, the particle has, has traveled four meters, right? So to go from negative three to one in a span of zero to one seconds, we traveled uh, four meters, right? And then take a look at this region right here. All right, so it seems like I'm kind of like going in, in another direction here and I'm going back to, back to negative three. So, um, now the particle is kind of like going backwards now to this part. And that happens at t equals to uh, three seconds. Okay, so if I look at this whole distance right here, it's like I traveled another, um, you know, another four meters, right? And then finally, um, at the end here, the particle just goes back to um, a time of four seconds. Uh, so from when we go from uh, three seconds to four seconds, that's a difference of one second. I go back from negative three back to positive one. So it's like the particle is now turning around and going back, right? Which creates another distance of four meters, right? So in total, that's kind of like uh, 12 meters in total. Okay. Um, so I know that was a bit confusing here. So let me kind of re-explain. Uh, re, uh, let me explain that one more time here. And let's just take a look at the graph. And sometimes it's a bit easier to look at the graph and figure it out. So um, take a look at this distance right here. What's the, what's the change in y value there? So I'm going from negative three to one. So that's like four meters, right? So when we go from a time of zero seconds, zero second to one second, I traveled four meters, right? And then take a look at the next point here. I go from x equals to one to x equals to three. And what's this distance here? Well, from negative three to positive one, that's another four meters, right? And then if I go from here all the way back up to there, that's another four meters. So four plus four plus four is going to be uh, uh, 12 meters. Okay, so um, I'm not 100% sure if that made sense or not, but a third way you can do this is by creating a table of values of time and S of T. And uh, some students who prefer the formula method, this might make a little bit more sense as well. Um, but when we're at time of zero, the position of the particle is at negative three. When I'm at a time of one second, the height is going to be a one. And when I'm at a time of three seconds, the, the height is now negative three. And a time of four seconds, I'm at a height of one. All right, so if you want to uh, construct this uh, table of values here, there's also another nice little formula that works. So I'll say TD for total distance. And what you're doing here, here is you're just taking the absolute value of 
basically um, you're taking the absolute value of the differences of the heights here. So if this is one, you write down one and you're taking the difference of the previous height, which is negative three. And you absolutely value that. Plus, now you go to this height right here, which is negative three, and you take the difference of your previous height, which is one. And then finally, you move on to your last height, which is one, and you take the difference of the previous height, which was negative three, so negative three like that. And as you can see, if you use this little formula here, you get absolute value of one plus three, plus the absolute value of negative four, plus the absolute value of one plus three. And uh, the way I see it right now is absolute value there, that's gonna be what, four plus four plus four, right? Which gives you 12 meters. All right, so there's a few ways where you can find the total distance. Um, I kind of like look at the graph there and I can see that from here to here, that's, uh, you know, four meters. And then from, from there to there, that's four meters. And then from there to there, that's another four meters, right? So other way, um, that might be a little better way to find the total distance instead of a formula, but those are, those are a few options to get the total distance there.